This is an action potential learning SAT mini lesson teaching you how to solve actual SAT questions to help prepare you for your upcoming test. I will be using released SAT questions from the College Board Official SAT Study Guide. The problem features a figure with the following labels B, E, H, and M, and a note that says the figure is not drawn to scale. Then it tells us a bit of information, asks us a question, and then gives us our answer choices. So there's a few things that we need to notice before starting to work on this problem. The first is that the note says the figure is not drawn to scale. If this notice is not listed in an SAT question, you can assume that the figure is accurate and you can make assumptions about the angles, the length, and the relationship between sides. However, if like in this question it says the figure is not drawn to scale, you can't make those assumptions. Whenever you see this, you should always, always rewrite the figure. So when we're working through this problem, you'll see me rewriting some things on the side here. It's critical to do this every single time you see a notice that says figure is not drawn to scale. If you're not careful, you could make an assumption about a figure that's not necessarily true. The second thing that I want you to notice is the answer choices. So we have square roots of two and square roots of three. Typically in the SAT, when you see answer choices that all basically have to do with square roots of three and square roots of two, and you see a figure that you could potentially draw triangles in the figure, a lot of times we're dealing with a special right triangle. And in fact, in this problem, that's exactly what we're dealing with. So look at your answer choices, compare it to the figure. If you could draw a triangle and we've got square roots in there, it's a good chance that it's gonna be a special right triangle. So now let's go ahead and look at the question. So it says the pyramid shown has an altitude H, and a square base of side M. So we know that it's square. The four edges that meet at V, which is the vertex, each have a length of E. Well, it turns out that E is the same thing as M. So I'm just gonna go ahead right now and just scratch out E, and I'm gonna write M instead. So that way I'm not confused. So E is the same thing as M, and each side has a length of, in this case now, M. Now we wanna know what is the value of H in terms of M. So the question is the value of h in terms of m. This statement, h in terms of m, it's the same thing as saying h is equal to something, and we've got some m's involved, right? So h is equal to something. In terms of m, our answer choice is gonna have m's involved, and that makes sense because if you look at your answer choices here, you see that you do have m in your answer choices. So we're trying to find what is h equal? That's the question. Now. Since I know that we're probably dealing with a special right triangle, and I, again, I know this because of the answer choices, we have square roots of two and square roots of three, and because I know I can draw a triangle if I wanted to in this figure, I'm going to assume that the way that I solve this problem is to figure out how a special right triangle can help me solve for H. So in fact, what I could do is trace a triangle from H. We know we want H involved because H equals something to M. We know we want M involved in some way because we're, we're going to get our answer in terms of M. Now how can I make a triangle out of this? What I'm going to do is draw a line from the center at H all the way through to one of angles in the square. Now remember, the base is a square. I'll rewrite that. And a square has angles of 90 degrees, right? So we know that each of these angles here is 90 degrees, so angle here, 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 and here, all 90 degrees. We also know that the line for the height, where it hits the base, is going to be in the center. And the reason that we know this is because V is the vertex, H travels down from the vertex to the base, and the vertex is connected by edges of equal length. Since the edges have equal length, and H is coming from the vertex, the only option is for the height to be centered at the middle of the square. When I'm drawing a line from the middle to one of the angles here, something really important happens. Each of these pieces here and here are bisected or split in half. So what does that mean? If we started off with an angle of 90 and we have a line that bisects that angle, each piece is 45 degrees. So this, this line here is equivalent to this line here. Now let's go ahead and redraw this triangle over to the side. Again, we're dealing with a right triangle, a special right triangle, and it's not perfect, but that's okay. So this is a reproduction of this piece here. This edge is H, 
this edge is M. We don't know what this piece is yet, but that's okay. Now we know that this angle here has to be 90 degrees. Now we know this because at the vertex where H comes down to the vertex and hits the base, since all these sides are equal, H is directly in the center, and it must be perpendicular to the base. So there's a lot of assumptions here that you just need to know, and it's something that will come with practice. So we know here that this is perpendicular, so this is 90 degrees. And remember, we also just found out that we have a 45 degree angle that happened because this line bisected the 90 degree angle here, so we know that this piece is 45 degrees. Now how do we figure out this other piece here? So since all the angles in a triangle are equal to 180, we can say 180 equals 90 plus 45 plus that last piece that we don't know. We need to solve for that question mark. And it turns out that it's 45. So 90 plus 45 plus 45 is equal to 180. So we know this piece here is 45 degrees. Now this is important because this is a special right triangle. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If you look at the front of your math section, you'll see this triangle reproduced for you so that you have a little bit more information. This is something that you should have memorized because you don't want to waste time on the SAT going back and looking up reference materials. But I'll go ahead and write this down now. So in the book, it gives you a 45, 45, 90 triangle. It has the following dimensions. S squared of 2 with leg S and leg S. It's really important when you're working through these problems to reproduce S squared of 2, S and S next to your actual triangle that you're dealing with. What we can say now is H is equal to S and M is equal to S squared root of 2. Now H is equal to S doesn't help us, right? Because what we're trying to get our answer in is in terms of, of M. So first we need to figure out how we can get S in terms of M so we can make a relationship between H and this side here. Well, we know that m is equal to s to the square root of 2. So let's write this down here. So m, we know, is equal to s to the square root of 2. If we solve for s in terms of m, then we can plug that value in here for s. So I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. So I get s equals m the square root of 2. Now if s is equal to m the square root of 2, then we know this side right here, don't we? So s is equal to m the square root of 2. Well, it turns out that h is equal to s. So what we can do now is write a relationship. We can say h is equal to s, right? h is equal to s, and s is equal to m the square over the square root of 2, m over the square root of 2. We want the value of h in terms of m, so h is equivalent to m to the square root of 2, and it turns out that that's your answer a. So there's a lot going on in this problem. There's a lot of takeaways that you really need to focus on. Takeaway one is, of course, the figure is not drawn to scale. And this is important because what you can see here is these edges, they look a lot longer than the sides of the square, don't they? But they're actually the exact same length, m is equal to m. So this is a little bit misleading. You always want to redraw the figures that you're working with yourself. The second takeaway is to look at your answer choices to try to help you figure out how you're going to attempt to solve this problem. Well, I immediately knew that since they were dealing with square roots of 2 and square roots of 3 in the answer choices, and since I can actually draw a triangle in this pyramid here, there was a good chance that we would be dealing with, with a special right triangle. And in fact, that's exactly what we were dealing with. The next takeaway is to understand the relationship between vertex and height of a pyramid and also that the point at which the height hits the base is important in figuring out what this angle is here. I knew that since these sides were all equivalent, that this height had to hit at the center of the base, meaning that when I drew a line from the center to one of the angles, it bisected that angle. Since the base was a square, I knew that that angle was originally 90 degrees. Finally, and the biggest step here, is that we had to understand that this was a special right triangle, and we had to figure out a way of solving for what H actually was equivalent to for our special right triangle. When you're dealing with special right triangles, always, always draw two figures. On one side, draw the figure that you're actually dealing with and trying to solve. On the other side, draw sort of the formula 
that tells you what the value of each side is. That way you can make an, a relationship between each side without getting confused. So I immediately knew that H was going to be equivalent to S and M was going to be equivalent to S squared of 2. From that, I could solve my problem. This is an Action Potential Learning SAT mini lesson. Thanks so much for watching.